<laughs> oh man, I was thinking about starting this uh, this video and saying like um, the founders uh, founders ministries are like my, my my some of my favorite friends are are Baptists. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. And I was thinking, wait, is that, are you even allowed to say that? Is it kind of like saying like, oh, I have some of my best friends are black, you know? Because like you're trying to appear like you're not racist. So you say some of my best friends are black. <laughs> some of my best friends are Baptist. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, the Founders Ministries, apparently they're doing a movie about some of this uh, critical theory, uh, cultural Marxism, social justice, all of this stuff. And they're doing it with some people that, uh, that I – that I uh, like very much, um, and it looks like it's going to be good. So let's let's watch the the trailer here. And I was going to start and stop and comment on it, but it just didn't really work out because the trailer kind of moves very quick. Um, so let's watch the whole thing, and then whatever comments I can remember to make, I'm going to make them. But again, these are some of my some of my best friends are Baptists, and as you can see, they're fighting the good fight, and this is good stuff. So let's uh, let's watch it together, and we will comment on it at the end. This is God's world, and he gets to set the rules. That's right. I see godless ideologies that have spread throughout Western civilization over the last several decades with a vengeance. I'd just like to directly address my, my white brothers and sisters out there. To tell us what we are supposed to be seeing. <laughs> Seek outside counsel. We're just not experts in this. I believe that God has say. given particularly what we call white evangelicals a divine opportunity. Many of these ideologies have been smuggled into many evangelical churches and organizations through the Trojan horse of social justice. We've got an opportunity to prove we need to listen more than we talk. I was not trained in any of this. Churches are gonna be better for, the, for finding subject matter experts and pulling them in. We've not been black. This understanding. <clears throat> We've not been black. <laughs> causes so many who are moving in these circles, advocating these ideologies to tell people in the hegemony that what they must do is sit down and be quiet and listen. Let's really step up to the plate and humble ourselves the way every Christian should humble themselves and say to the Dahadis and to say to the, my brothers and sisters here, teach us. And I think some people think the, the gospel would advance much more rapidly if we ingratiated. I know I said I wouldn't start and stop, but I kind of saw a Me Too moment here. Did you guys catch that? Let's check it out. And say to the Dahadis and to say to the, my brothers and sisters here. Uh, maybe not. He didn't touch her. And I think some people. I take it back. He didn't touch her. She looked like she was a little upset. <laughs> he got a little too close to her. But anyway, let's continue. People think the, the gospel would advance much more rapidly if we ingratiated ourselves to the culture. So there's that impulse and then sometimes just a tenderness like, what could possibly matter if she preached? She's got a Bible word. I heard somebody on TV and she preached better than my preacher. A Southern Baptist convention that doesn't have a place for Beth Moore doesn't have a place for a lot of us. We need to turn the women loose with the gift that God have ordained them to even preach to men and women. And that's exactly what Paul instructed Phoebe to do. And then we talk ourselves into outsmarting the Bible. And uh, it's almost like, yeah, let's try a little bit. Well, no, that wouldn't matter either. And then you wake up one day and like you're egalitarian. We're always <laughs> having uh, the powers, the spiritual powers and principalities exert pressure on us. That's not new. So if we can take a clear passage of scripture that says, I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority. When we're finished with it, it now says, I do permit a woman in some cases. Then there is no stopping where you can take that and where that will go. I had a major That's true. Uh, newspaper call me and accost me with that. You know, can, can you deny the complementarianism behind much abuse? I said, well, clearly it was not motivating Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> The ideas of liberal Christianity did not die. And, and they're here with a vengeance. The critical race theory and intersectionality are simply analytical tools. They're meant true. to be used as, as tools, not as, as a They're not, that's not true, it's naive. And, and we're seeing all of this overt attack from the left outside of the church, but the insidious stuff inside the church, frequently Ooh. that people don't even recognize for what it is. <laughs> that uses our guilt and our shame against us to get us to do self-destructive things. You see, it's precisely at this point. That's true too. That I think we're being played. We recognize the obligation. 
and we can be played into their agenda as to what to do in order to pursue justice. That has been their core tactic for a century and a half. It's not new. It's not even new to Southern Baptists because Satan does this. He is constantly telling you you should be guilty <laughs> oh! and you're forgiven. He is constantly asking you to live with regrets when the Father has taken all the sins of the world. That's right. Amen. Wow. There's some nifty editing going on in there. I'll tell you right now, that looks very well done. That trailer is very well done. I'm, i I got to be honest. I'm, I'm looking forward to this, this movie coming out. Um, wow. You know, when I heard about this, I, 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 I had a, I had the opportunity to watch this trailer, uh, last week. Um, and when I, when I had heard about the project, I, I was excited about it for sure. Um, and, but I, I, and I knew it wouldn't, I knew it wouldn't um, pull punches. You know, I, I knew it wouldn't be, you know, milk toast. I knew it wouldn't be like that. But I was not prepared for the kind of essentially, let's just put it, edgy type stuff it, it, like that editing. Like it, it talks about, I mean, some of the some of the shadowy figures in there. You can kind of tell some of the people that they're talking about are Russell Moore and, and some of these other people. And then it talks about the, uh, it kind of ties together some of the egalitarian, you know, movements in the SBC with uh, that Jezebel lady. <laughs> That's what Doug Wilson called her. Anyway, um, but anyway, so... so, so a little edgier than I thought it would be, and, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for that because at the end of the day, um, this is serious business. You know, I am a post millennial guy. I'm very optimistic when it comes to the Church of Jesus Christ in the long term, but but we're in we're in serious times right now. Serious issues are being uh, put on the table. Serious battles and wars are being fought right now, and so we need to act like it's serious. It is serious. And so we need to call out who the enemies of truth are. And I think that, that this, this, this trailer does a pretty good job sort of framing that. We'll see what the movie does. Um, but based on the trailer, uh, I think that we've got, we've got some good things to look forward to here. Now, now, look, at the end of the day, I'm not the kind of guy that requires purity, right? So there are some people that I saw that were interviewed here, and, and we'll see if they're portrayed favorably or not. I don't know. I mean, some people here that, that I think are on the right side of these issues, but they're not as, quote-unquote, pure uh, and when it comes to the issues that I would be. I mean, I'm, I don't require purity to be on the same team as you. I don't require you to do things the same way I would do them in order to be on the same team. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what these people have to say about this. Um, that beginning part with, uh, <laughs> with like Matt Chandler, that other dude, who was that other guy, that, that other white guy? I don't know. I don't know. I don't recognize him, man. I mean, maybe it's just, they're just not my circles, but, um, you know, I find so interesting. Like, it's just like Matt Chandler basically is talking about, and that other guy, they're talking about deplatforming yourself. If you're white, you know, like you're not an expert. You've never been black before. And so maybe you should just ask blacks and browns to teach you and you can sit at their feet and just teach us about racism and teach us about what the Bible says to do about racism. And that's so stupid. That's so stupid because the Bible doesn't give skin color any kind of extra qualifications when it comes to talking about what the Bible says about partiality and oppression and things like that. You can be white and have a really clear idea about what the Bible says to do about partiality and oppression. It doesn't require you to be black or brown or whatever. But notice that these people aren't taking their own advice. You see, this is the thing. I find this so annoying, right? These t Chandler will tell you to deplatform yourself if you're white. The other guy will tell you, you know, sit at the feet of black people. But yet they're talking. You know, if you really wanted to affect change in the world, and and you know, maybe you should take some advice from that uh, from that inspirational meme. Be the change you want to see in the world. Why not? Instead of telling everyone else to deplatform themselves, why don't you deplatform yourself? Stop telling us what to do. You're white. You've never been black. You don't know anything about this racism. Why don't you platform me? I know more about racism than you, Matt Chandler, right? Why not? Why not? Oh, because it's really not about that. It's about me looking good. It's about uh, you know doing things that appear good, but not actually doing them yourself. Actually, just telling everyone else to do them. I find that so annoying. Look, practice what you preach. You want to, you want every, all the white pastors out there to deplatform themselves? Deplatform yourself first. Why don't you lead by example? I find that so annoying. And, and, and you know, anyway. So there's that. Um, and then, you know, hey, this is, this is going to be interesting. Now, now, what I wanted to talk about, too, before, before I finish, 
is uh, what what people are gonna how how people are gonna respond to this video. I think I was watching uh, a podcast. I think this was um, is either a podcast. Is it a podcast? Or is it a, a YouTube channel? I, it's it's probably both. I, I was watching this. It was uh it was uh it was Jordan Hall on Pulpit and Pen. He was talking about something specific. I, I don't I don't watch uh, Pulpit and Pen religiously or anything like that. But whenever there's a topic that I find interesting, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put it on while I'm working just to hear what what he's ha- has to say. And oftentimes he has some really interesting things to say. And one of his analyses of the whole situation here is that. Right now, we're kind of like people that are on our side of this issue are kind of in between two responses, right? Normally, they just ignore you. (laughs) They just ignore you. You know, they pretend like you don't even exist. They follow you, of course. They they watch your videos. They watch your podcast. They read your articles, but they don't. They but they don't acknowledge it. They pretend like it doesn't exist. And and I know this is true. This happens to me. I know there's one guy out there, and you know who you are. You know who you are, who's disavowed me publicly. He's distanced himself from me publicly. He slandered me publicly. But he watches all my videos. You know who you are. He pretends like I don't exist, like my content, all while he's talking about me. You know, sometimes he'll subtweet me. Sometimes he'll do these. Anyway, so you, you, we're, we're being ignored, but also, and then we're, we're trying to be discredited. So we're in between two responses. You're either ignored or you're discredited. And right now, we're mostly still ignored, but also kind of being discredited. So I think that the Founders Ministry is going to encounter two responses. Number one, they'll be mostly ignored. Number two, they'll attempt to be discredited. Oh, they, they were, they were, they were being mean. They said mean words, and they, you know, they they talked about someone uh, a little bit too aggressively, and um, that was that wasn't very winsome of them. And you know, Jesus Jesus spoke kindly to people. He 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 would never have said that things that you said. And oh, but uh, you might counter well. Jesus, uh, you know, turned over tables, but you're not Jesus. You're not Jesus, so you can't do it. That's the kind of responses they're going to get. They're going to get discredited for being not winsome enough, uh, using mean words, maybe being too aggressive, maybe talking to uh, to um, to um, much like a man, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So that's what I think is going to happen. This is going to this movie is going to be either ignored or they're going to try to get discredited for being too mean, essentially. But the reality is that that's what's going to happen with the intelligentsia, the people that that that. Um, that are like the thought leaders of Big Eva. But I think the regular Joes, they like this kind of stuff. And not only do they like it, but but they want to know what's going on. I think that um, the social justice warriors in Christianity, the Russell Moores of the world, the the um, the Thabiti Nyanyabwilis of the world, the Eric Masons of the world, they have awoken a sleeping giant. Because at the end of the day, most everyday people in the pews, they really hadn't heard about this stuff, critical theory, cultural Marxism. And if they had, only in only in secular contexts, you know what I mean? I'm not saying that they're ignorant. They just this is not on their radar. I mean, they're they're busy doing other stuff. You know what I mean? For the kingdom of God. Um, but the Thabetes of the world, the Russell Moores of the world, they've overplayed their hands so much that people are starting to be like, okay, what, what's the deal with this? And so they're looking for information. They're looking for my YouTube channel. They're looking for people that are going to produce movies about this. They're looking for blog posts about this. They're looking. And you know what they're going to find? They're going to find Pulpit and Pen because Pulpit and Pen was, was talking about this stuff a long time ago. And they're going to find that some people are telling the truth and others are obfuscating. And their biggest the biggest thing they can say against some of us is, oh, they're, they're too mean. They're just too mean. Now, look, at the end of the day, do I agree with everything that Founders Ministry says or Pulpit and Pen says or Dr. Uh, 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 or Pastor Robert Truelove says or, or all these guys? No, absolutely not. But the point is, people are going to be looking for this information. And guess what? Once they find it, they're going to realize, you know what? The Gospel Coalition hasn't really been telling me the truth all the time. You know, the ERLC hasn't really been straightforward with me all the time. And so you guys overplayed your hand, and this movie is the result. And I got to be honest with you, there's other movies like this coming out. There's one called Enemies uh, Enemies Within the Church. There's some other things that are in the works and stuff like that. And I, I'm looking forward to all of them because the more available this information is for the common everyday folk who's not going sit to sit back and read, you know, 100 articles a day from the Gospel Coalition, but they will watch a movie like this. So I'm glad I'm grateful for this kind of stuff. I'm grateful for this because we need to clear up some of these issues. We need to provide resources for people that they can easily consume while they're going about their everyday business, while they're producing uh, for the kingdom of God, while they're working for their family, while they're raising their kids and stuff like that. This kind of stuff is going to be important. And your little criticisms of, oh, they're too mean, they're too mean and they're too aggressive. And it's not going to, it's not going to fly with everyday folks because everyday folks, they're not like you. 
they're not like you. They don't have these ivory towers where if anyone says a harsh word against a liberal, well, they're the devil. That's just a fundamentalist. They're not like you. They, they like this stuff. They eat it up. And guess what? They know that some of this stuff, it's harsh language. It's not necessarily unbiblical, guys. It just isn't. You could you could write all the articles you want about how talking in aggressive ways is evil and wrong, and they know that they read the Bible. They read the Bible. Every day Joe's in the pew. Every day Joe's six-packs. They read the Bible, and they see how people talk, godly men, godly men of valor, how they talk, and they know that what you're saying is not true. So I'm looking forward to this movie. I'm looking forward to all the other stuff coming out. Uh, if you find my YouTube content helpful, go ahead and share it. Uh, leave a comment below. Subscribe to my channel. Share it with others who might like it too. Um, all this stuff is important, and it's all coming to a head very soon. Anyway, it's kind of a ramble, unfortunately, but uh, I hope this is helpful. God bless.